So my first instinct for a question like this would be to arithmetize because I'm like, oh, maybe I can get rid of the x. It doesn't matter and see what this equation looks like. But if I put x as zero, then I lose out on the a and the b terms in the equation that I'm trying to build, and I need the b term. I need to know the b. And this is why we can't really arithmetize at all here. If we put in a number for x, then the a, b, and c terms lose their kind of individuality. We know what the a term is because it's attached to the x squared. We know what the b term is because it's attached to the x. So we can't make up a random number here because if we put in any number, we are going to lose the thing that identifies each term. We'll start to be able to mix them together and we don't want that. So we have to just do this the old fashioned algebra way. Now, many of you are, are very bothered by fractions and we're gonna need to FOIL here. But what do you wanna do? Do you wanna FOIL with the fractions? Personally, that doesn't bother me. We easily could. But if it does bother you, just convert this to decimals and, and then FOIL from there, right? So you could also say that this is 0.5x plus 1.5 times 1.5x plus 0.5. So if that's your path, go with that. You can use Desmos, you can use a handheld calculator, you can do whatever. I'm gonna FOIL this using the fractions because I actually think fractions are easier to work with than decimals, even with a calculator. Um, but also you could take a shortcut here where you know how to build the B part specifically. Uh, I'm just gonna do the whole thing because I, you know, I don't know, I don't trust myself to, to do it right. So first is going to be 3 fourths X squared. Ooh. Outer is 1 fourth X. Inner is 9 fourths X. Last is 3 fourths. I think that's right. Now we need the B term by combining the two X parts. So that's uh, 1 fourth plus 9 fourths is 10 fourths X. We could just enter that as 10 fourths. There's nothing wrong with that. We could reduce it. We don't have to though, but this is also the same as five halves X, or if you had done the decimals, 2.5 X, all are good. So just put the, put the 2.5 in. I, I would put it in as, as five halves, mostly because I just like a fraction. If I'm gonna commit, let's commit to it. Um, and there you go. So like I said, we don't need to get these other terms in this case. These two didn't matter. So if you understand how foiling is gonna work and you're able to kind of spot the right things, you can go for it, but you gotta be really confident and not mess it up. And, and that's always what I'm worried about with algebra is when we take little shortcuts, we are confident that we're taking one that works, but then something doesn't work out right. We forget something we should have remembered and, and then we lose out on easy points. So whatever the case, you know, just be really, really careful. Now, if this were the first module and I had time to go back, um, and make sure, I would probably double check my foiling and just see if it works. So I would just do, okay, this is one half, oh, this is gonna take forever, I'm sorry, x plus three halves, <laughs> I hate the iPad for this, uh, three halves x, uh, x plus one half, right? So I get a, a parabola, and then did I foil it right? So that would be three, fourths x, oopsie, you gotta be careful, x squared uh, plus five halves x plus three fourths. Did I get the same parabola twice? Yeah, just tap it on and off and you can see that they overlap. So I know my algebra is correct because I got the same thing twice, right? So as a shape. So that would only be if I had tons of time in the first module and I could go back and do that and be really sure I didn't make a careless mistake. But honestly, this is the case where if it's a hard module, you gotta be right the first time because you're not gonna have time to do this. And so you gotta not make careless mistakes is really what it comes down to.